Uh, this episode, I'm taking you inside a long disused synagogue in the west of Romania as we carry on prepping for our adventure tours in 2024. We're going to be taking you through the photography and the challenges of entering a place for the first time when you don't know what it looks like, or the selection process of a first time architectural photo shoot, and uh, it's going to be a good one. Uh, also, filming for the first time on the Canon RP. I picked this up to replace my M50. Finally, I did want the R8, but I decided to not go full budget and uh, went for the RP. So hopefully, you notice some sort of upgrade. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing, and you can also check out my website in the description below. beautiful synagogue. It's one of the best remaining uh, examples that I've seen, especially exterior. Now, I do have a little clue of what's inside. It's much bigger than I realised actually in the flesh, much, much bigger. Uh, the light is a little bit strange. Now, in the night, I actually uh, got woke up three or four times by storms, really, really crazy electrical storms. Like, I've had them in Italy, I know. Uh, it's been really hot, obviously, in the south of Europe this summer. And they woke me up three or four times and I thought I was going to wake up to an overcast day. And there is in the distance, but it looks like the sun's starting to burn it off here in the valley. And uh, I don't know what that means for the light inside the actual synagogue itself. And then I'm going to take you inside. And today we're going to be talking about the challenges of photographing a place when you've got limited time, shot selection, priorities, and how we're going to go about it. Like one hour, 30 minutes, something like this. I said just today I'd be as quick as possible, but one hour. One hour? One hour, 30 Picture, minutes. Yeah. yeah, is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's not often these days I am wowed when I walk into a location. I've been to probably four, five, six hundred. I don't even know. I've lost count a long time ago in many countries, as you know, across the world. Wow. Original condition, obviously decaying, obviously disused, obviously abandoned. It's just as beautiful inside as it is out. My feelings about this were true. There is birds flying around in here and bird shit all over the floor. He told me I'm not allowed on the balcony, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to be very careful and do so, which is not something I would normally recommend. So one of the first things, one of the first tips that I can actually give you when given limited time, you heard there, chat from the guy, 90 minutes and I had to push him. So the first thing is I extended what I asked for yesterday ever so slightly. I said it would be just over an hour. I asked for 90 minutes this morning to give myself a little bit more of a window. So the next tip, the main tip I suppose I can give you is know where everything in your bag is, have it organized so that you can set up quickly and that doesn't deter your time on site, your shoot time, the fun stuff, the good stuff, you know? So that's our first challenge. I know in my bag, my R5 is there. I got most stuff prepared this morning and we're going to be doing this uh, really at the speed of light. So all of my stuff is neatly packed. We know how long it's gonna to take to set up, which really is gonna be minimal setup time. That's the first thing. And also, I keep everything together. As I'm opening all of the lenses, the lens caps, I'm putting them all in one pocket so that I can get at them all when I'm switching between lenses, equipment, so on. So I can get at everything. The lens cap of the main camera that I'm using right now, the lens cap goes in this pocket. I do have a video filter here in my pocket, which if I'm not careful, is gonna get misplaced. So unfortunately, that does have to go back in here for when we go outside but the thing is about outside i can take my time doing that so this can go away so just because you're in a rush it doesn't mean you want to compromise on the safety of your gear make sure it's all in good condition and not going to get knocked and banged so even though we're trying to 
hurry along. We don't want to put things in the weird places because that's where mistakes happen. Okay, having two camera bodies that are now full frame is awesome, by the way, because one of the problems I was having previously is I was always having to switch out between my Canon R5 from video to photography, and it was completely slowing me down. That is, well, frankly, annoying. Um, so the first thing I've noticed is I'm not far enough back. I want as much space as possible for this shot. I'm going down the hall here. I want to line things up straight, but I'm going to be cropping my final results. So I want as much chance of getting as much of that ceiling as possible. Let's move this way. So the first thing is, is overshooting. Now the lighting in here, by the way, is stunning. That is kind of how it was designed. It's soft, it's beautiful, it's easy for compositions. That's the first thing I've noticed. And uh, I'm gonna overshoot this though, because usually when I walk into a location like this for the first time, I do not know if I'm ever gonna come back. So I wanna get it right in camera first time. So I'm doing three brackets, two stops apart, which actually ties in with my shooting style and how I edit, edit like an image. I tried to get the range. But in here you would not need, not on the R5. One shot would be absolutely fine. You'd be able to work with that and work with it to the best of your ability. So I'm gonna shoot that straight away. I focused on the chandelier at the front and everything behind that's gonna be in focus because it's basically a third of the way into the scene. I'm just gonna quickly check my results. My first uh, note there is my middle bracket. It's stunning. I absolutely love it. Let's look at that on the screen now. So my next tip here is to pre-select the shot, the next shot in your head as you're photographing. So here, I already know that my next shot is gonna be further in, just taking one of those chandeliers only, but a similar kind of composition. The other thing as well is I'm just checking my frame throughout, make sure I've got no mistakes, making sure my lining up is working out well, making sure my focus is good. And uh, that's, that's very, very, very important to do. So yeah, second tip, is to make sure that you're pre-selecting your next shot or thinking about your next shot towards the tail end of the first. Where am I gonna to get to next? Where's my next shot? That's gonna help speed you up on, you know, on location. So yeah, let's move further forwards. somewhere around here, like inside of this is where I wanna be. Now there's a chair over the other side of this, which I know from experience is something I can use. That'll give me a little bit of height. And I'm gonna aim in for somewhere about here. So the advantage of being in this location, of course, like further forwards, is although I've got this spike just above my head, you do have to be careful of your surroundings, of course, making sure that this above isn't going anywhere, is that it enables me to use a little bit of height of these chairs or pews directly below me. Uh, and that gives me a slight advantage when I'm trying to line things up and, and get a bit more height on this further forward shot. So that's basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm now just framing up similar to the last shot. Setting should there still be there in camera and that is the next tip is right now, I'm gonna lift my camera column, give myself a little bit of height, but bear in mind, I've got this just above me. I'm further, far enough forwards that this isn't gonna be in my frame when I shift my lens up. I'm using the lines in camera to basically make sure I line everything up correctly. And my next tip is to leave your settings as they are, because actually most of my shots in here are gonna be F8, three brackets, two stops apart, ISO nice and low, 100, 160. And that's my tip, is to keep it on. What's the point? You've got live view, you've got plenty of batteries. Uh, here I've kind of made a slight mistake in that this is in my shot, like I thought. So what I'm gonna have to do here is just slightly pull that back. Just get it out of my shot. That gives me the height. I'm gonna be very careful with that because it's very old. So that little bit of save time all adds up, you know, bit by bit. So leave the camera on, leave the settings in camera, spend your time to check your results. So this is where I'm focusing. You can see just up here, it's between that and the front element of my lens is huge. So I've had to refocus there and just double check that and I spotted it straight away. Having my settings 
clued on and locked in has enabled me to check my images and make sure that they are right as we're going through this and not focus about settings and resetting the camera, leaving them as they are. So yeah, I, had, I then noticed that that is out of focus compared to the front and my scene throughout looks a little something like this. Okay, next shot, let's move. Okay, so in this tip, it's quite simple. First of all, I'm gonna make sure that I do all of the images with the 17 mil that I want to do first. Don't keep changing lenses. Don't switch between this one and the 24 mil, wide angle. That sounds simple, right? Uh, just to be doing that, but trust me, I have people come join me on trips where I see them going around their bag, constantly changing lenses, switching out lenses, taking this shot, that shot. It takes them way longer. Shoot all your images with one lens and then move on to another lens choice. So select one lens when you first come into the room. I've opted for the 17 mil as you see here. So it's kind of a bonus tip for you. Ultimately, there's not a lot I can do from down here. I'm quite limited. The killer shot is upstairs. So my next tip here is like I said, just to uh, slow down, don't worry, I know it sounds counterproductive, but don't worry you're gonna run out of time, don't keep panicking, because if you panic you make mistakes, and that's something you wanna be doing. So I've taken like these shots at the bottom here, I'm fairly happy with those, the roof's fine, but it, ultimately I'm limited to my position. So the next thing is there's always going to be challenges on site. Things crop up and that changes your plan. So don't, not to panic, basically, at that point. Here, I'm just going to check the time. Yeah, I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. I've realised I cannot actually get up to the top. So I ring the guy. I'm going to say to him, please let me up there, um, that I'm going to need to uh, get up onto the get up onto the roof section, the, the upstairs, for one shot, final shot. And of course, if I'm at the right speed and my settings are already good on camera, which, you know, they will be, um, then when he's on his way, I'll be ready to go. I'll take one shot, but I'll actually take a few, frame up quickly, pano, whatever I need to do, five minutes up the top. Um, so yeah, ahead of schedule, I'm going to ring him now and see what he says. Let's see if we can get a, a better response out of him. Let's call him. There is no other way up. It's, it's an outside door, basically, and females used to basically uh, pray upstairs and the men down the bottom. So in this situation, that's what they used to do, an external door completely to get up there. Uh, hello, how are you? Okay, I, I go too close. Yeah, I'm, ne yeah, I'm nearly finished. Uh, my only concern is that I've not managed to get, like, the key shot, which I think I, need, I do need to go upstairs onto the balcony. Is it possible for five minutes to do that when you come? You're from the balcony, just shooting one way, just one photo, and obviously I'll be careful. Okay, okay. Um, I try. Yeah. I go, and I try to. Open. open. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. How much minutes? I'll be 10, uh, that shot will finish me, I'll be like 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. Okay. Bye. And there we go, where we have it. The guy said yes. Originally, he said no. He now knows I'm trustworthy, you know, I'm coming at the time I said I'm coming. I turned up at the time I said I'm turning up. I got inside the location and I was ahead of schedule. He's happy, he's on his way, and now he's agreed to let me up there. But he asked how long I'm gonna be. And I said, 10 minutes, you heard that on the phone. That means I need to be good to go. By the door, ready, camera settings ready. I need to pop this on, have my settings dialed in in camera, and then, uh, I can grab those remaining shots. Let me just take a quick phone snap as well before he comes. It's getting old. <laughs> old. So the final tip is a relatively quick one, and that is to concentrate. That was a challenge for me here. Not only was I trying to do the video, shoot and line up images that I'd waited the entire time for, I then had the added pressure of having to chat with the guy from the Ministry of Culture as I captured the shots. And this can happen, it's happened to me a lot over the years. 
Not panicking and explaining what you're doing in this situation helps. You may even have to politely explain that you need to focus and then you can chat. They're not doing this on purpose. It is generally the people, the public, they think it's easy to photograph something. But we know, of course, lots can go wrong. So that wraps up this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a cracker. I hope you enjoyed the synagogue. It's very difficult, as you can imagine. I'm trying to teach you how to calm down and slow down and photograph these places with care and attention. And there I am panicking because obviously I'm filming and I'm photographing. I allowed myself an hour and a half, took an hour and 15 and another 15 minutes upstairs. So I'm going to leave you with my exterior photographs, which of course could be obtained without the added pressure of someone watching over me. The best practice here is to do these either side of a meeting. I'd recommend before, light dependent, as it gets you in the swing of things. So that's all for this week. I'll leave you with my favorite image from the entire shoot, shot at the building's rear with the authorization of the neighbor. See you next time.